Is your child having sleeping problems? Has someone told you that they'll grow out of it? Well, I have some good news and some bad news for you. The bad news is that children don't often grow out of sleep problems on their own. The good news is, though, that there are treatments that can help. Today we're going to discuss childhood behavioral insomnia and its treatments. There are typically two types of issues that we see with childhood behavioral insomnia, settling problems and night waking problems. Some children may have one or the other, and some children may have both. But let's take a closer look at the differences between these two types of sleep problems. Or the first type of problem is settling problems. Settling problems are issues getting your child to go to sleep. This could be because your child is crying, making demands, possibly getting up from their bed, all children have trouble going to sleep now and then, but if the problem is taking more than 30 minutes to get them into bed and to fall asleep, it might be time to seek treatment. Night wakings are another issue. This is when children have trouble maintaining sleep. Some children will wake after being asleep for a short period of time. This does look different in every child, so there's not a set definition as to what night wakings look like. There are a few things we need to consider before beginning any treatment. Sleep needs do vary by age and individual. Something else we need to take into consideration before beginning any treatment is that sleep disorders are often comorbid with other disorders, meaning that they often co-occur. Sometimes sleep issues can even be the symptoms of other psychological disorders. Another consideration is that some children may be predisposed to these disorders. This does not mean that they are guaranteed to develop them, but it is something to consider. A final note is that many sleep problems are managed rather than cured. Regardless of what issues your child is experiencing with sleep, Here's a few tips to try before beginning any formalized treatment. Monitor what they're eating and drinking before they go to bed, especially caffeinated beverages. Set a regular bedtime and limit daytime naps if that's developmentally appropriate for your child. Monitor when they're exercising and make sure this isn't too close to bedtime. Also, make sure they're not playing with toys in their bed. Graduated Extinction works by teaching the child how to fall asleep on his or her own. Over time, the child develops his or her own self-soothing behaviors, which allows the child to go to sleep themselves rather than requiring parental assistance. One of the best ways to learn about a treatment is to see how it applies to a real situation. Here's an example of how to implement graduated extinction step-by-step. -step. Today we'll be talking to the mother of a five-year-old girl named Nicole with settling problems. Nicole has had persistent problems going to bed for the last year she often doesn't stay in bed for more than 15 minutes at a time before crying, requesting food or drinks, or demanding attention from her parents. Sometimes she'll even get out of bed to harass the dog, flicker the lights, or cause other problems around the house. Her mother continuously complies with Nicole's demands, and it often takes upwards of two hours for Nicole to finally go to sleep. Her mother has decided to come to us because it was exhausting and she wasn't sure what to do. Let's take a look. <laughs> All right, Nicole, it's time to put the, time to put your roommate up and go to bed, okay? All right, thank you. All right, now go to sleep. I love you. Are you are you playing with your toy? Are you you're supposed to be going to sleep, Nicole? Oh, you're laughing. All right, come on, put your toy up and go to bed. All right, go to sleep this time, okay? Mom. Yes. I want, some, I want some water. You want some water? Okay, but then you have to go back to bed. Okay. Okay, that's the last thing. All right. Now go to sleep. All right. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Okay, well, 
If I give you gummies, do you promise to go to sleep? Yeah. This is the last thing to, that I can give you before you go to bed, okay? Uh-huh. All right, well, we'll get some gummies and you'll go to sleep, okay? Okay. All right. Mom. Yes? I play with the dog. No, you cannot play with the dog. You have asked for a snack, you've asked for a drink, and a bedtime story. You have to go to sleep now. Okay. Okay, now go to sleep. So tell me a little bit about your child's sleeping problems. Yeah, so Nicole's been extremely defiant in going to bed lately. She'll cry and then I'll go in there and check on her and she always wants a drink of water, another snack, a bedtime story. Um, most of the time I just end up laying in bed with her till she goes to sleep because I just can't figure out anything else to do. Yeah, that sounds exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting. <laughs> That's why I came to you. So let's investigate some of these problems. What I'd like for you to do between now and the next session is record some of your child's sleep-related behaviors. First, we have a sleep log. You can see that each day of the week is listed on the log in one-hour increments. Draw a down arrow when your child goes down to sleep and an up arrow when your child gets out of bed. Shade in the times that your child is actually sleeping. This includes both nighttime sleep and naps during the day. So if you try to put Nicole to bed at 11, but she isn't going down until 1, you would draw a down arrow at the 11 p.m. block, but you wouldn't start shading in until the 1 a.m. block. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wonderful. The second form I'd like for you to fill out over this next week is called a behavioral log. Okay. This log will be a sort of diary of how your child acts around bedtime. So each day you'll fill in the date and the approximate bedtime. In the next column, you'll write in any behaviors your child exhibits before bedtime. For example, you said sometimes Nicole asks for snacks when she is trying to avoid going to bed. Yeah, she does that a lot. Okay, so a brief description such as ask for snack would go in the behavior at bedtime category. Okay. In the next column titled your response, you'll describe what actions you took to get her back to bed. What do you normally do when Nicole asks you for a snack? I usually tell her she can have a small snack if she promises to go to sleep afterwards. Okay, and so then what happens? Well, I usually give her a couple of crackers or an apple or something and then tuck her back in bed. Okay, so give her a snack would go in the your response column. Okay, got it. Next, you'll do the same thing in the behavior during awakenings column that you did in the first column when you briefly describe your child's behaviors. But instead of describing the child's behaviors surrounding bedtime, these would be occurrences of awakening in the night after the child has fallen asleep for a period of time. In other words, what does your child do when he or she wakes up in the middle of the night? Your response would be listed in the your response column. Okay, I think we can do that. Wonderful. Well, I'll see you in one week then. Okay. So tell me how the sleep diary and the behavior logs went this week. Well, it went well. Um, it, I definitely made me realize that it's a lot more of a problem than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. So other than that, it went well. Okay, well, let's take a look. All right, so the um, most nights I was able to get her in bed by about 8, but most of the time I couldn't get her to sleep until after midnight because she would wake up crying, requesting things of me, um, wanting me to get her a drink or a snack or read a book to her, and then um, most of the time to get her to go to sleep, I would end up having to lay down with her. Mm -hmm. So one of the common themes I'm seeing is she cries in order to get your attention and then she's able to make demands. So a snack or a drink or um, time with you or getting to sleep in bed with you, is that correct? Yeah, so it's mostly crying and protesting and wanting to sleep with me, so making requests. So yeah, definitely. Okay. So what I think, based on what you've told me, is we should try graduated extinction. Um, it's an appropriate treatment for her. Is this, have you heard of this before? I haven't. Okay. So basically it involves spending increasingly longer amounts of time ignoring the cries and the protests of the child. The goal is to fade the amount of time that the parent spends attending to the child around bedtime while giving them an opportunity to still check in on their child. Okay, so it's based on how I respond? Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, so first off, maintain the bedtime of around 8 o'clock every night. Um, you want to make sure that this is kept as a routine. So 8 o'clock, we start our bedtime routine. Okay. Second, how long do you typically wait um, while Nicole is crying? I go in immediately. I don't like listening to her cry. Okay. So I go in immediately. Yeah, that's understandable. So we want to set an amount of time to wait before going in and on checking her in on her. Is two minutes a reasonable time that you can wait? Oh, let's 
seems like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, seems like a long time. I could probably do like a minute. Yeah. Know? Okay. Well, let's try a minute at first. Okay. Let's see how that goes. The next step is to pick when you want to begin implementing the treatment. So it will likely be a really long night for you at first. Um, so I recommend starting on like a weekend night, like a Friday. Okay. So today's Wednesday. We could do Friday night. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Friday night works. So follow your normal bedtime routine by putting her into bed. If and when she starts crying, wait one minute. If she's still crying after one minute, you can go in and check on her. During this time, though, do not pick her up, engage in the extensive conversation or bargaining with her in any way, or get her any food or drinks. Okay. Um, the best thing you can do is just go in there, make sure she's safe, and tell her to go back to bed. Then, if she starts crying again later on, do the same thing, wait one minute. If she's still crying after one minute, go in and check on her and do the thing, do the whole thing again. So continue this pattern until she falls asleep. On Saturday, if you feel like you can, extend it by a half a minute or maybe a full minute, um, do so. And then on Sunday, you can extend it even further than that. The most important thing, though, is to ignore any requests that she may make. This may be difficult, but it's really important in order to make sure that the therapy is successful. Okay, I think I can do that. All right. Any questions for me? I don't think so. Okay. So this week, continue using your sleep diary and your behavior log to okay. monitor any changes that may happen. Um, and then we will see what changes uh, occur over next week. All right, thanks. Wonderful, we'll see you. All right, so how did it go this week? It went well. Um, the first few nights it was taking 15 minutes in between cries and then by last night um, it was about 30 minutes in between cries. So we got, um, it was a lot longer in between and then by last night I was waiting five minutes before I went in and checked on her, so. Wow, and you started off with one minute. That's awesome progress. Yeah, I think so. We still have a long way to go, but yeah. Well, tell me more. Did it seem to help at all? I think it helped. Uh, yeah, it definitely helped. Um, you know, obviously she's 15 minutes, and then by last night she was going to bed um, by like 11 or so. So you know, we're bumping her bedtime up. We're waiting longer between cries. So you know, it's it's progress, but it's. Slow, be, slowly but surely. Yeah, absolutely. Nicole really seems to be taking to this treatment. Yeah, she does. So yeah. we still have a long way to go. Yeah. But it's progress, and we can continue this, and you can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, more like sleep at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you, were there any problems? Do you feel like you could make any modifications to this treatment? I'm a little worried the longer and longer I wait um, to go in that it's... Um, hurting her just emotionally since she's crying for that long Absolutely. without me. So it's a little bit, you know, mom hearing her daughter cry for that long, it's a little bit, hurts the heart. So. Yeah. You feel like it's kind of distressing both of you a little bit. Yeah. Okay. That's a really common worry of parents um, who choose this treatment. Um, but I assure you, there have been many studies and there are actually there's actually no evidence that it hurts them long term and it helps them develop self-soothing behaviors for themselves rather than you having to do that for them. So it's actually a good thing. Okay, well, that makes me feel better. Yeah. Do you have any other questions for me today? I don't think so. Okay. Well, let's continue implementing this graduated extinction and we'll make any modifications if we need to along the way and we'll continue to monitor our progress. All right, thanks. Awesome. At this point in treatment, additional sessions are scheduled as modifications are needed. It is up to you and your therapist to decide when ending treatment is best for your child. Good night. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. That was just one example of graduated extinction, and there are many other types of therapies that can be used to treat childhood behavioral insomnia. You and your therapist should discuss what treatments are right for you and your child. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching.